Good Monday morning, August 20th. I have a bag of poop in my pocket. <clears throat> Today has been surprise poop day. So, that's been fun. But I figure with a bag of poop in my pocket, it won't be nearly as crinkly for you. As if I'm holding it up right next to the microphone. I was apparently the subject, at least to an extent, of a stream by Black Label Cop Watch. I got to watch it because it was on Amanda's channel, Pink Camera Magic. Or at least she put up a copy of it. I don't know when the actual... I don't watch The Fat Parasite. Uh, but he had some questions. And, uh, you know, he's a piece of shit, but I'll answer his questions for him. He wants to know... He, well, he, he thinks he wants to know, or he was asking her, maybe he was just trying to make a conversation, but he was asking her basically why I start off with asking questions about the fat parasite. Well, I ask questions about the fat parasite because you may have noticed the fat parasite has more subs than anybody else. And the fat parasite is a problem. Now, he is, to his credit, or at least he's giving lip service to this, he's saying that he's putting links in for the auditors. I appreciate that. I will reward you for making progress, Fat Parasite, so thank you. That is something you should have been doing from the get-go. You shouldn't have had to be shamed into it, but I appreciate it now that you are doing it, or at least as now that you're saying you're doing it. But you are the biggest name in the community, and you are a problem, so you, you, get, you get my words. Enjoy them. Um, you are still a problem because all this bad stuff that, that all of a sudden now, oh, oh yeah, well, you call them dickheads, but asshats, you know, we know you're just, we know you're emulating what I'm saying now because you know that's the direction that the community is going, but you are and were still a huge contributor to the problem. And that problem is sensationalism. Did the no contact audits make your show <gasps> no they didn't why is that why is that fat parasite because there's no money to be made in the no contact audits is there there's no money to be made there's no outrage if the police walk up say hi and walk away but 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 come back and violate my rights there's no money in that so that's why the the fat parasite never put those up so there was never any incentive for people to make no contact audits because you're not going to make the fat parasites show. He's not going to he's not going to showcase you. You're not going to get internet famous if the fat parasite doesn't put your content up on his channel and he's not going to put no contact audits up on his channel. Do you understand the problem? No, the fat parasite doesn't understand the problem. He still thinks he's a good guy. Oh, and P&P &P met him, and P&P &P approved. Well, guess who's been on my radar lately? You know why P&P &P News has been on my radar? It's because people understand the problem with the fat parasite now. So now the next, the next step is to hammer down the next problem nail. Now, P&P &P News is by far and away better than a better person than the fat parasite. That's why PNP &P News doesn't get the terrible nickname and he just gets a passing comment that he is propagandizing with his with his titles. But PNP &P News doesn't play the full video like the fat parasite does. He gives you a reason to go to the auditor's channel to watch the remainder of the video. But he's still he still highlights the sensational ones. And that is a problem. That is reinforcing a negative behavior. He also thinks that... Uh, he thinks that because he's stupid and he's unable to understand that how people play and joke, he thinks that I just find James Freeman attractive and that's why... James Freeman's on my radar. James Freeman's not on my radar. The fat parasite is parroting language that is being propagated into the community by James Freeman, and he doesn't even realize it. James Freeman is an influencer. You dummy. James Freeman 
sayings. There's no victim. There's no harm. It shouldn't be a crime. Uh, Bao is a political prisoner. Yeah, the fat parasite said Bao is a political prisoner. The fat parasite has zero understanding of the law. He doesn't even understand how contingencies work. And at least in California, um, you can't take a criminal case on a contingency fee. Not that there would be a payout anyway, but you just can't do it. So if there is, in California, if there is a criminal case that you want to take, you can take it pro bono, and then you can take the uh, subsequent um, civil case contingency. But they have to be two separate things, negotiated in two separate transactions, and you're not, you're just, you can't take a, you can't wrap up a criminal case in with a civil case and take it contingency. You just can't do it. It is an ethics violation. So he's dumb. He doesn't, he doesn't understand what he's talking about. And yet he gets up there and he spouts his nonsense like he's some sort of authoritative voice. What else do we have to talk about? Oh, yeah. Um, the, the auditor that he could call out for being just a, a drama whore. The auditor that he could call out was... There you go. There's your sacrificial lamb. It's swine pig, swine flu, whatever. Swine repellent. He's safe. Well, I'll take the heat for calling him out, says Black Label. You big, fat, parasitic pussy. You won't take any real heat. You won't, you won't stick your neck out. You're doing this for money. You can't afford to be edgy. My God. What a hypocrite. But now all of a sudden, now all of a sudden, uh, he is on board with, oh yeah, you know, got to remember, you know, it's a jury who's going to be seeing this. Oh, oh yeah, you can't be a dick out there. I guess you can be a dick, but you probably shouldn't. Yeah. Fat Parasite is bad for the movement. It's bad for it. He's bad, bad, bad. The police aren't bad often enough for enough people to get on his show just by the police being bad to create the drama. So he rewards the people who create their own drama. Uh. Speaking of Bao being a political prisoner, of course, Bao is not a political prisoner. He's not in the tank. He's not being held because of his political opinions. He's being held because of harassment. It's still about the harassment. And and playing games, calling a spoon a fork does not make it a fork. It doesn't even make it a spork. If it's a spoon, it's a spoon. There's a... There's an auditor that I was watching. One... One Galt... Uh, I don't remember exactly what his name was. He goes after Mark Stevens. So if you want to watch somebody go after Mark Stevens ad nauseum, um, it's this one. I'll try to, I'll try to, I'll go through my history. I watched several of his videos. They're all, they're all on Mark Stevens. But I'll try to remember to put his name in the description or his, uh, I'm sorry, link to his, his channel. But, uh, He calls it spoonerism now. That threw me off. Um, Spoonerisms are where you mix parts of words together in a sentence to change the meaning of the words, typically in error, but sometimes, sometimes for comedic effect. But he calls spoonerism these people who are who are trying to practice law in the mold of Lysander Spooner. I don't know if you remember it. Um, back when I first started swinging at Sovereign Citizens, I uh, had a bunch of people who came into my comments and they wanted me to read. There's three works by Lysander Spooner that they thought were just going to win the day for him, and they didn't realize that he's a crackpot and nobody accepted his views and they are not the state of the law. So they're meaningless. They're useless. They're trash. They're, they're nothing. 
They've had no political effect. They've had no legal effect. They are worthless. Worthless. But, uh, but Spooner tried to mix politics into the law. And, you know, you, you, to change politics, I mean, you can, you can try to change it with injunctions and things like that. Some things, you can try to get some things found to be unconstitutional. But generally speaking, politics, you want to approach it in the ballot box with public, public opinion And, uh, yeah, it's, anyway, my point is, is that, uh, Freeman is very much a Mark Stevens-esque. I, I, I never was really familiar with Mark Stevens. I was familiar with the terrible gish gallop he tried to use, um, providing legal defense with just a bunch of random sentences out of random cases that he thought worked together to make a point, but he never understood the point he was trying to make or what the point of those various cases were. So it all came out sounding like garbage. I guess if you know what you're talking about, it came out sounding like garbage. If you don't, maybe it sounded good. But uh, Freeman is apparently a student of Mark Stevens. And he got the... His, his motion to dismiss got the expected results from Mark Stevens, who couldn't use his own theories to get his case dismissed. But because Freeman is a student of Stevens, he also tries to use the law, the courts, as a means of changing politics. And it, it doesn't work. It's He's achieving exactly the results that we expect, which means that he's got a bunch of charges and bows a bunch of charges, and neither one of them have done jack shit to make any meaningful change in the law. Now, he has an opportunity to get that 18 U.S.C. 795. I want to say 795. If I'm wrong, let me know. But filming a military installation, he has an opportunity to do good on that. We'll see if he does. I'm not holding my breath, but hopefully. What else we got going on? Oh, uh, I took my wife to Carpe Vino in Old Auburn. It is my boss's absolute favorite restaurant. Absolute favorite. Talks about it all the time. Had the foie gras. So good. It's foie gras with uh, chicken livers. So it's not like pure foie gras, but it was still freaking amazing. So good. Um, had another appetizer. It was pork bellies. That was also exceptional. The, the sauce and the... Uh, the peppers just really brought everything out. Oh, so good. Are the heirloom tomatoes, they were all right. Um, they weren't a winner in my book. And then my wife had the New York steak and uh, she really enjoyed it. I had the pork chop and well, it was very flavorful. It had uh, bacon and peaches and some a lot of caramelization going on. Uh, a lot of flavor, but my God, it was probably the toughest pork chop I think I've had in a long time. And I was absolutely shocked by that. Um, so yeah, that was disappointing. Yeah. Well, honesty is honest, right? And then for the dessert, um, we had a, this tort thing that was pretty good. I had a glass of port, really nice port. I ended up buying a bottle of it because it was really a really flavorful port. Just went perfect. Um, and then so my wife had the tort. I had a couple bites of it. And then 
Uh, I just got a scoop of their homemade ice cream, or not homemade, I guess, their store-made ice cream. It was really good. It was just vanilla, because, you know, I'm a vanilla kind of guy, but uh, it was really good. You could see the vanilla beans in it. It was very, it was very good ice cream. Anyway, that's, that's your review of Carpe Vino. They got a lot of wines. Uh, they have a large wine selection. Uh, the, my waiter, Paul, did a phenomenal job. Um, I, I, think, I think if I let him, he would have wiped my mouth for me. I mean, he was just very, paid a lot of attention, uh, very knowledgeable on the wines. Just an excellent, excellent service. Service was amazing. Yeah, so Carpe Vino in uh, Old Auburn. I, I heard the bass was really good. Ah, I just wasn't impressed with the pork chop. And the uh, the steak apparently was very tender. So I'm just I'm just going to go ahead and say maybe, maybe not get the pork chop. It, it was very tasty. It just was really tough. Anyway, I guess that's it. Uh, we've passed 15 minutes, so I think we're good. Thanks for... It's probably really dark, so thanks for at least listening, maybe catching a doggy butt here and there, and uh, have a great day.